Well, member for Footscray. Thank you, Speaker. I acknowledge that here and in Footscray, we're on the traditional lands of the Kulin Nation. I offer my respects to their elders, past and present. When I reflected on what I wanted to say in this speech, I decided that more than anything, I wanted this to be a tribute to the people and places of Footscray. Footscray, Braybrook, West Footscray, Sunshine, Sunshine West, Maribyrnong, Maidstone and Tottenham. The streets of these suburbs have provided the backdrop for some of Australia's great stories. So Footscray, this is my tribute to you and my hopes for the future of our vibrant and fascinating corner of Melbourne. I have a strong sense of belonging in Footscray. I'm the member of the sixth generation of my family to live in the inner west. And there's been times where we've lived in other parts of Melbourne, but Footscray is a place that calls you back. When I'm sitting on the Doug Hawkins wing with family and friends, eating barn me on Barclay Street, and when I hear the ships announce their arrival in the port, I feel at home. Footscray has a personality that's hard to pin down. Peter Haffenden from the Living Museum of the West once told me that he thinks of Footscray as a bit like the book The Magic Faraway Tree, that every few days a new land comes along with new characters to meet and different stories to tell. I like that analogy because the many lands of the inner west coexist beautifully and every day I'm inspired by our local heroes and their stories of endeavour, activism and triumph over adversity. There was William Cooper, the Aboriginal activist who dedicated his life to the advancement of his people. In 1938, he led the world's only protest of Crystal Nacht, marching from his home in Footscray to the German consulate. We carry with us the spirit of the workers of Sunshine's Harvester Factory, who fought for and secured the landmark decision to enshrine a living wage. Mm -hmm. Those workers changed Australia for the better forever and it's our job to protect their legacy from those who seek to undermine it. There's the late Ron Palmer, well known as Mr Footscray, who dedicated his life to local causes, our brass bands, restoring our river, saving our doggies and telling our stories. There was George Sealaf, the proud parochial legend of the Meatworkers Union. He started his working life at the Anglis Meatworks and went on to be a champion of the arts for working people in the West. It's because of George that we have the groundbreaking Footscray Community Arts Centre and Ursel Doon, the heritage listed home of the Footscray, uh, Footscray Historical Society. The public artwork dedicated to George Sealaf is located on Vipont Street, named after my great grandmother, Linda Vipont. Nana Vipont volunteered for the Red Cross for 70 years. She welcomed newly arrived refugees at the hostel in Maribyrnong. She was a feminist, a woman of compassion. Nana was 104 when she died, the city of Maribyrnong's oldest resident. There's Fati Yagi from West Footscray. He established the Australia Light Foundation in Tottenham and organises shipping containers full of emergency supplies to go to refugee camps across the globe. Fati's here in the gallery today. Thank you for everything you do. There's Dennis Nelthorpe, who runs West Justice, our local community legal service. You will never meet a fiercer defender of social justice than Dennis. It's the nurses at Tweddle, Footscray's famous hospital for parents and babies, which celebrates its 99th birthday this year. I'm proud to say that this beacon of support to families will be rebuilt by this government, increasing its capacity by 40%. It's the determined residents of Footscray who in the early 1900s agitated against the polluting industries. They believed the people of Footscray deserved their own gardens like those in the eastern suburbs. They fought and they won, and Footscray Park remains the most beautiful Edwardian gardens in Australia. To me, it will always be the place where my dad proposed to my mum. <laughs> of course, there's the army of local legends who more than once saved the Footscray Football Club from going under. Our community owes a debt of gratitude to these people every time we hear sons, or nowadays daughters of the West, ring out across West Footscray. These are just a few of the people who have made and continue to make our community so strong, and their work inspires me every day. I'm optimistic for our future. Like our fairy tale premiership team, I say, why not us? Why not Footscray? And I know that the Andrews Labor government believes that too. 
For many, the inner west is a place where dreams of freedom, fairness and democracy have come true. We share the hope that belongs to the waves of refugees and migrants from faraway lands who continue to arrive in Footscray to seek a better life. It's home to the extraordinary Asylum Seeker Resource Centre, where every year they provide essential services and aid to more than 4,600 people. They're supported by hundreds of volunteering Melburnians who believe that everyone deserves their fair go, their shot at an opportunity in Australia. And as the member for Footscray, I'll do whatever I can to support their important work. And this includes advocating for more public and social housing. Ours is a community that lifts people up, but too often I hear stories of people trying to get ahead without the basics. People living on the edge of homelessness in motels and rooming houses because of job insecurity, mental illness, or because they're seeking asylum. Of course, Footscray is home to some innovative solutions including Macaulay House, Victoria's first purpose-built accommodation and support hub for women who are homeless as a result of family violence. It was funded by a $4 million Andrews Government contribution, part of Labor's comprehensive response to the Royal Commission to family violence. This is a government that lives its values. These investments don't make the front page of the newspaper, but they do change lives. And I'll always fight for more public, crisis and social housing in the Inner West, mm -hmm. as well as inclusionary zoning, because developers can play a role in the provision of affordable housing. Change is upon us, and the Inner West is booming. The population in Footscray is set to grow by 140% in the next two decades. The factories my family members worked in, such as Kinnears and Ryko, are being transformed into thousands of apartments. The Maribyrnong defence land, where my grandfather and great-grandfather worked, is now on the market being advertised by the federal government as a place that could accommodate 6,000 homes. The fact is it can't and it shouldn't. It's well known that the soil there is heavily contaminated. That precious parcel of land was poisoned in the nation's interest at the expense of my community. And to give it back in the same condition they received it would be the right thing to do. And like many of its neighbours, I believe it should be a green wedge for the inner west. We could certainly use the open space. There was a time in recent history when developers were allowed to let rip. Many developments were approved with towers far exceeding height controls, with no open space, no infrastructure contributions, and no affordable housing to offset the density that was allowed, and that was an injustice. Our young and rapidly growing community is rightfully demanding more open space, cleaner air and trucks off our local roads, whilst wanting to preserve the industrial heritage that makes us unique. I'm proud to be joining a government that will deliver 24-hour truck bans and environmental protections for our waterways. Across suburbs once designed for factories and freight, we have to continue our efforts to deliver safer cycling connections and increase our tree canopy to reduce the urban heat island effect. Footscray is a young electorate. The average age of residents is 33, and last year there were 5,475 babies born at Sunshine Hospital, including my son, Ned. <laughs> when we left busy Sunshine Hospital, we passed the almost finished Joan Kerner Women's and Children's Hospital. To me, this represents the future and optimism of the West, Infrastructure everywhere, investments in families and a changing local economy. The old industries are making way for the new, and we have a wealth of creative startups and small businesses and a thriving knowledge sector. It's supported by Victoria University and this government's landmark investment into TAFE, making sure people don't get left behind as industry changes. Healthcare is a growing industry locally and I'm proud to be joining this fine Labor government as it builds a world-class $1.5 billion hospital for the Footscray community. It's the hospital we deserve. It's the hospital our health workers deserve. It'll be transformative and it'll be second to none. In sunshine, the local economy will be revitalised by airport rail. And across the inner west, schools are being rebuilt, asbestos is being removed and breakfasts are being served. 
They're filling tummies and fueling young minds, and soon the dental vans will do their important work. Minister Molino, thank you. I joined the Labor Party when I was 15 years old, as a student at a time when the Kennett government was closing schools. Education was a catalyst for my early activism, and along with the environment, remain two policy areas that I'm keenly interested in, and I owe this to my parents. Mum taught me to believe in the power and great leveller of public education, that teaching is a most noble profession. She's here today. Thanks, Mum. My dad was a horticulture lecturer. He encouraged me to have an inquiring mind, to care about the environment, and it's from Dad I inherited my love of the mighty West. Before Dad died, he told me not to give up on politics. I'm sure he would have loved to have seen his daughter representing the party he believed in for the area he grew up in. To my whole family, thank you for a lifetime of support. My brothers Dan and Nick, my sister-in-law Deb, and Nick's partner Louise, to my parents-in-law, John and Carmel, and their fierce, loyal kids and partners, Luke and Talara, Nikki and Sam, Jesse and Stephen, thank you. To my husband, Sam McCrone, my partner in everything, thank you for being the best dad to Tilly and Ned and my wisest counsel. To Tilly and Ned, my love for you is the motivating force behind me being here. I want Footscray to be the best possible place for you and for all the children of the inner west to grow up in. To the true believers who helped me get here, my campaign managers, Catherine Munt and Owen Virtue, your thoughtful and generous leadership helped me every day, especially when Ned arrived. I can never repay the debt of grat gratitude I have to you, except to work hard every day to achieve the best outcomes I can for our beloved Footscray. To our campaign committee of committed Westies, Steve Howland, Ashol Arrow, Megan Darling, Sal Sanley, Jacob Cook, Sinead Mildenhall, Salil Cardislaw, Alice Mutton and Hannah Brown, thank you for your organising and your activism. To all the ALP members in Footscray, the people who door knocked and donated, thank you. To Emily's List and Barbara Jennings, the AWU and Ben Davis, thank you. You get by with a little help from your friends. Carla DeCampo, Liam O'Brien, Fiona and Mark Ward, Anna Hobson, Andrew and Andrea Hobson, William Cooley, Andres Pudge, Pam O'Brien, thank you. I'd like to thank two former members for Footscray, Marsha Thompson and Bruce Mildenhall. Thank you for your service and your passion for the West. To my mentor, the one and only, the trailblazing Nicola Roxon, thank you. Thank you to my friends in here in the parliament, in particular Minister Carews. You help me believe in myself every day and every step of the way. To Minister Scott, Tim Richardson, Sarah Connolly and the Western Suburbs Sisterhood in this place, and to Minister Somirek in the other place, thank you for your practical support and encouragement. To our Premier and this progressive government of the people, ours is a party of depth, a party that truly governs for all Victorians, thank you. To the people of Footscray, with clear eyes and a full heart, I'll work hard for you every day. For the cause that lacks assistance, for the wrong that needs resistance, for the future in the distance, and all the good I can do, I'll give it my best shot. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>